the people fighting against the implementation of this amendment had a flag that is still flown and celebrated by the party that Candace Owens defends. The 13th Amendment didn't just happen, we had to kill some people first. And uh, today those people are honored fairly exclusively by Candace Owens' party. Prager you a short history of slavery. I thought maybe I could open, because I always think about the first few sentences, you know? And I'd say something like, my guess is that this, this video's goal, the purpose of this video, is going to be to reassure a white audience that they have nothing to feel guilty over. Which, by the way, uh, they're going to do by lying and misrepresenting history substantially. And I thought, maybe I have to wait for that to be proven the case, uh, but look at the look at the description slavery didn't start in 1492 when columbus came to the new world and it didn't start in 1619 when the first slaves landed in jamestown it's not a white phenomenon <laughs> now i just want to be clear by the way in my life in the whole of my life in all the spaces that i've been in i have never once heard anybody say that white people invented slavery Conservatives are always saying, all the time they're saying this, they're saying, uh, you know, they want you to believe that white people invented slavery, or they sort of imply other people are making that point by saying white people didn't invent slavery. Nobody's saying that. Who said that? We all came from Africa. I'm sure there were slaves 40,000 years ago. I don't think white people invented that. Um, anyway, as always, a uh, Fun disclaimer to all the fine people watching who don't understand my positions from the get-go, and it is that I don't think white people uh, should feel guilty for slavery because I don't think people should feel guilty for things that they didn't or did do, I have stuff they're not responsible for. However, uh, we should know about slavery, and we should be aware of the effect it's had on the modern world, and we should be willing to address the inequalities it produced with government policy today. So let's see what we're up to. And now for a brief- And of course, because this is a PragerU video on a race subject, we bring out a black conservative, which they do every single time. Despite conservatives always saying that, uh, you know, this liberal identity politics is counterproductive, they will do this relentlessly every time. All right, Candace, let's go. Brief history of slavery. Uh-huh. Here's the first thing you need to know. Slavery was not invented by white people. What? <laughs> Again? I, the first point, I have never in my life heard anybody say that. I never, I have never heard that said from anyone, not in media, not in, not in my classrooms. I'm sure somebody somewhere has said it. I don't doubt in all of human society, anyone has said it, but I, I just like they, oh, they're so obsessed with making sure their audience thinks that we think that. It did not start in 1619 when we, the first slaves came to Jamestown. We know. It's it existed a, before then. Yes. It did not start in 1492 when Columbus discovered the New World. No one in believes fact, this. When the intrepid explorer landed in the Bahamas, the native Taino tribe hoped that he would help them defeat their aggressive neighbors, the Caribs. The Caribs enslaved the Taino and on occasion oh my God. served them for dinner. Slavery existed in- Now wait, quick follow-up question. How'd that work out with Columbus? So you, you've given us that little historical window view. How did Columbus end up helping the native people? Did you, did, is, that, is that what happened? You know, actually, um, Christopher Columbus was such a barbaric monster uh, that he was censured in his own time. Even by the standards of people hundreds and hundreds of years ago, uh, they thought that Columbus's behavior was, uh, was, was monstrous, you know? Columbus is criticized for his alleged brutality and in initiating the depopulation of the indigenous Americans, whether by disease or intentional genocide. Criticized Columbus for initiating colonization for his abuse of natives. Columbus's friend, Miguel de Cuneo, Cuneo uh, kept an indigenous woman he captured whom Columbus gave to him, then brutally raped her. The punishment for an indigenous person failing to fill their hawk spell of gold dust every three months was cutting off the hands of those without tokens, letting them bleed to death. Thousands of natives are thought to have committed suicide by poison to escape their persecution. Now, thousands committing suicide to escape 
means hundreds of thousands enslaved, okay? Those are not favorable numbers to our, uh, our great founder here. Columbus had an economic incent, uh, interest in the enslavement of those natives, etc., etc. Even those who loved him had to admit the atrocities that had taken place. A debate over whether it's appropriate to use the term genocide in the modern context. Other historians argue that while brutal Columbus was simply a product of his time, well, that's kind of the case for everyone, I think. Still others openly defend colonization. Ah, that's the PragerU uh, 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 point to there. Let's see. Around the turn of the 21st century, estimates for the pre-Columbian population of Hispaniola ranged from between a quarter million and two million, but genetic analysis suggests it may have been as low as 10 to 50,000. Um, based on the previous figures of a few hundred thousand, some have estimated a third or more of the natives in Haiti were dead within the first two years of Columbus's governorship. Whenever you're looking over records like this, one of the issues with records of Columbus uh, is that not only did they come from hundreds of years ago, but they also were being done in the New World, which meant that it was difficult to get multiple perspectives of what was taking place over there, you know? Like, the people who were writing on what Columbus were doing were often part of Columbus's crew. It's not like this was all taking place in a big city where dozens or hundreds of academics and historians could analyze everything taking place. Is the native cannibalism part even true? Um, records of cannibalization uh, among indigenous people have always been exaggerated uh, uh, by sort of imperialist Westerners as a means of justifying their enslavement and colonization. As for the specific group mentioned by PragerU, I don't know. I mean, it's possible that, like, a group did that, but it wasn't exactly common. It was frequently talked about and infrequently done. The indigenous population in the Americas overall is thought to have been reduced by about 90% in the century after Columbus's arrival. That would have been, uh, that would have been disease predominantly. Yikes. Pretty problematic, I would say. Does anyone else feel like, uh, Columbus might be a little bit of a, uh, of a problematic fave? I don't know about that one. Anyway, he, he still, you know, came on over here and laid the seeds for this country, but again, Remember how uh, Charlie Kirk said the purpose of education was to be thankful for your country? This is what that looks like, by the way. I ignore, overwrite, or lie about history so that you can never be critical about the heroes your leaders construct for you. In Africa, Asia, and the Middle East. The word slave actually comes from the Slavs of Eastern Europe. Millions of them, all white, by the way were captured and enslaved by Muslims in the 9th century and later by the Ottoman Turks. Hold on, I feel like I need to fact check every part of this. The oldest written histories of the Slavs can be shortly summarized. Myriads of slave hunts and the enthrallment of entire people. The Slav was the most prized of human goods. As a poll, this makes me very proud since I'm adjacent, you know. The Arabian geographer of the 9th century tells us how the Magyars in the Pontus steppe dominated all the Slavs living near them. The Magyars made raids upon the Slavs and took their prisoners along the coast to Kerk, where the Byzantines came to meet them and gave Greek brocades and such wares in exchange for the prisoners. Damn! That's pretty cringe. Vosh, is Polak a racial slur? I don't know, but it's okay if you say it about me. I, f I forgive you. Slavery existed when the Roman Empire controlled the Mediterranean and most of Europe from the 1st through the 5th centuries. Slavery existed when Alexander the Great... They are literally dedicating over a minute of this video just to say white people didn't invent slavery. This is literally, we're over a minute in, and we're still attempting to disprove a point that nobody believes. ...conquered Persia in the 4th century BC. It was so common that Aristotle simply considered it natural. Yeah, yeah. The slave master model was just how the world operated in the great philosopher's day. Slavery existed during the time of the oh ancient my Egyptians 5,000 years ago. Holy shit! We- Nobody believes white people invented slavery. Is this gonna be the whole video? Can we just keep going like further and further back points in time, you know? Yeah, slavery is mentioned in the Bible. That's correct. It's in the Bible. We know! As far back as we can go in human history, we find slavery. Yes! As renowned historian John Steele Gordon notes from Time Immemorial, slaves were a major item of commerce, as much as a third of the population of the ancient world was enslaved. Okay. Here's the second yeah, thing you need to know. White people uh -oh. were the first to formally put an end to slavery. Now that... <laughs> 
is not true at all, depending on how wide your definition of white people is, at least. Let's take a look. What, worldwide abolition of slavery. Let's, uh, let's see. Weren't there, like, societies thousands of years ago that banned slavery? Hold on. It also, depending on whether you even consider serf slaves, we have to talk more about that, yeah, because what type of slavery there is changes significantly. Cyrus the Great, the first king of ancient Persia in 539 BC, conquered the city of Babylon, but it was his next actions that marked a major advance for man. He freed the slaves, declared that all people had the right to choose their own religion, and established racial equality. Holy, just established it? Damn. Was that easy? Huh. Just slap that shit down. Well, that was before Christ died, you know? So that was, that was a l little, little while ago, you know? I think one of the technical difficulties we're going to have here is that the, the term abolition of slavery is going to hinge on the legal systems in which they took place, you know? So while it's possible that ancient kings and emperors may have abolished slavery in their own time, civilizations have changed since then, and laws may have changed, and so on. Here's a, uh, a, a wiki article on the timeline of the abolition of slavery, uh, starting in ancient times. So let's take a look at that. In the early 6th century BC, Athenian lawgiver Solon abolishes debt slavery of Athenian citizens and frees all Athenian citizens who had formerly been enslaved. That's nice. The chattel slavery continued. That's not nice. Uh, the Indian emperor Ashoka abolishes the slave trade and encourages people to treat slaves well. If you abolish the slave trade, so does that just mean like you can't trade them anymore, but you just have what you have, I guess? So sort of putting a freeze on, on, the, on the, the commercial. <laughs> That's kind of an odd half step there, but okay. Lex Portelia Papiria abolishes Nexum contracts, a form of pledging the debt bondage of poor Roman citizens to wealthy creditors as security for loans. Chattel slavery was not abolished. So I see a tendency here. The tendency we're looking at here is that certain types of slavery are abolished, but chattel slavery remains. Probably because chattel slaves were of a lower social caste, whereas the slaves uh, that were freed were like debt slaves. Essentially, um, uh, indentured servants, I suppose, would be the most accurate relative term, I would guess. Measures by the emperor of the Qin dynasty to eliminate the landowning aristocracy, based, include the abolition of slavery and the establishment of a free peasantry. Nice. Well, that's pretty cool. Though later there was a revolt and many of the laws were overturned. It's Qin? This is Qin? Oh, I never knew that. Interesting. Xin? Xin? Yeah? Okay. Dynasty. Wang Meng, uh, first and only emperor of that dynasty. Xin? Okay, Xin. Usurped the Chinese throne and instituted a series of sweeping reforms, including the abolition of slavery. Uh, however, this turned many uh, popular and elite sentiments against them, and slavery was reintroduced after he was killed by an angry mob. Damn, dude. It looks like uh, non-white people were so committed to the abolition of slavery that they would do so, even when it led to public sentiment being turned against them and them being killed by an angry mob. That's pretty wild. Pope Gregory I bans Jews from owning Christian slaves. Something tells me this has more to do with anti-Semitism than it does, uh... than it does anti-slavery. I have a feeling this isn't really, uh... about the slavery thing. Oh, God. And it looks like we have some measures from Rome to prevent the sale of Christian slaves by other religious groups. Pope John the 13th... wait, 8th declares the enslavement of fellow Christians a sin and commands their release. Well, that's nice. Prohibits voluntary self-enslavement. Tondo was the first pre-colonial Philippine state to abolish slavery. Well, that's nice. Slaves were freed on a large scale in 956 by the Goryeo dynasty. Well, that's also very nice. Slave trade was banned in the city under the rule of Doge Pietro IV Candiano. William the Conqueror uh, prohibits the sale of any person to heathens as slaves. Okay, so again, we have the sort of Christian uh, Christian favoritism a little bit there. All English slaves in the island. We've got a lot of ethnic and religious uh, preferentialism here. The statutes of the town abolishes slavery. Mercedarians founded in Barcelona with the purpose of ransoming poor Christians. 
uh, enslaved by Muslims. Also banning Jews from owning Christian slaves. This seems to go on for quite a while. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and say that uh, this sentiment right here, white people were the first to formally put an end to slavery, is wrong for several reasons. The first is that depending on your definition of slavery, we didn't abolish it. To, there is still slavery in the United States today. We still have prisons uh, which deprive people of their freedoms, in which people are uh, selectively or disproportionately uh, imprisoned, and their labor is sold for pennies on the dollar. Uh, and we still had sharecropping immediately after the end of slavery, which replicated all of the economic and social systems of slavery with the veneer of freedom attached to it. Additionally, if you go ahead and look at history, or even just Wikipedia, you will find that centuries and millennia prior to what we would now call the white abolition of slavery saw many other societies also abolishing slavery. So, yeah, pretty much wrong on every level here. In 1833, Britain was the first... Notice how everything we talked about was centuries before 1833 a country in the history of the world to pass a Slavery Abolition Act. They were quickly followed by France, who in 1848 abolished slavery in her many colonies. Then, of course, came the 13th Amendment in the United States Constitution. After a multi-year civil war in which the people fighting against the implementation of this amendment had a flag that is still flown and celebrated by the party that Candace Owens defends. Keep that in mind. It's the... Uh... It didn't, the 13th Amendment didn't just happen, we had to kill some people first, and uh, today those people are honored fairly exclusively by Candace Owens' party. After centuries of human slavery- This isn't true, Haiti abolished slavery in 1804. Man, is that true? Man, white people can't do anything. Oh, look at that. Here's an article called, Haiti was the first nation to permanently ban slavery. I don't think that Haiti uh, was full of white people. I think they killed all the white people, actually. And then all the remaining non-white people abolished slavery. <laughs> well, look at that. They found a solution. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay, we're wrong on, on, like, every conceivable, imaginable level here, you know? But it isn't surprising to me that uh, PragerU would... I, I Because PragerU's argument here, essentially, is, one, you can't expect white people to feel guilty for... Um, for stuff their ancestors did, which is true, but then they follow it up with two, but white people should be proud uh, that they, that their race was the first to fix and end slavery, you know? Slavery. White men led the world in putting an end to the abhorrent practice. That includes the 300,000 Union soldiers, overwhelmingly white, who died during the Civil War. You, you can't take credit for the Union soldiers when you would have supported the Confederacy. Who were they fighting? White men. <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, yeah, dude, the heroic, uh, I bet, th is the implication that the Confederates were black? Like, the Union soldiers are across the meadow and they're like, let us free you! Psh! You're a human being! Psh! All races are equal! And then over in the South from the con Confederate side, there are black guys like, no, we like slavery! Psh! No, no, we, we like, this is fine! Psh! You know? Yeah, come on, take our slavery. Yeah, psh. Like, what are, what's the implication here? What is going on? War. Now, am I saying that this makes white people better than anyone else? Of course not. I want to see the right emote in chat after that one. Thank you. My purpose here is to simply tell the truth. And the truth <laughs> is that human history is complicated. <laughs> no one, regardless of skin color, stands guiltless. No, wait, wait, wait. I thought we we were all guiltless. Wait, I thought we didn't have any guilt because this all happened from times that we weren't alive for. What? Wait, you can't oscillate between these points. I'm consistent. I don't think white people should feel guilty for slavery. I'm fucking owning slaves. Just understand the history and acknowledge what it does to the modern world. Don't, don't, I'm like, I don't feel guilty. Yet today, we are never told to consider the murderous Persian Empire or oh the cannibalism God. of indigenous tribes of North- <laughs> Okay. Oh, no. She's full on doing the like, oh, yeah, the natives were savages who ate each other thing. Okay, yeah. The murderous Persians. Hey, remember the Persian emperor who banned slavery 500 years before the death of Christ? 
North and South America, or the heinous actions under the imperialistic Muslim, Chinese, Mongol, or Japanese empires. We aren't taught world history. For, okay, first of all, again, nobody is told that only white people did slavery. And second of all, Americans aren't taught world history. If you want to give us better history courses, then go for it. But you're the one who put fucking DeVos in charge of the Department of Education, okay? That's on you, all right? Yeah, teach us better history, okay? I would love it if Americans could learn a little bit more about countries that aren't their own. To name just a few. Instead, we're told that slavery is a white phenomenon. We, literally nobody, nobody, please, I'm begging you guys, in chat, have any of you heard this? I have only ever heard this when conservatives say other people are saying this. I never hear this. This is one of those points that I hear so rarely that I don't even think I've seen it from the people on the left who I try to distance myself from. Like, I don't, I don't, I, I genuinely don't know where this comes from. Now, the only way in which you could say slavery is a white phenomenon is if you're exclusively referring to America, in which case, yes, in America, it was mostly white people owning black people. Uh, yes, that that is true. But worldwide, I have just never met anyone who believes this. And I like, by the way, how this is a short history of slavery. We have not learned a single thing about it. The entire goal of this video is to say very defensively, well, well white people aren't that bad, which like you're kind of telling on yourself a little bit here. Maybe, uh, maybe the white guilt was coming from inside the conservatives all along. And like all persistent lies, this lie spawns a bunch of other lies. Yeah? On social media, I come across extraordinary depictions about how Africans lived like pharaohs before Europe. Oh God, Candace Owens found Hotep Twitter. Oh no, Ca Ca Candace Owens found one Photoshop of a black guy in one of those pharaoh headdresses, and now we're gonna get a whole goddamn spiel about it. God damn. Uh. Europeans came and laid waste to their paradise. I wish any of this were true, but... That's kind of a weird thing to say, Candace. That's a little bit of an odd thing to say. It's not. It's a fantasy. The truth is that Africans were sold into slavery by other black Africans. And so this is a, a half-truth, okay? So let me explain to you guys how slavery has happened uh, all over the world for the most part, okay? There are two basic kinds of acquisitions of slaves, okay? There are two basic ways to do it, okay? In one half, you do what's happening here, which is that you buy them from slave merchants. And in the other half, you conquer entire populations and enslave those you don't kill. Those are basically the two ways to acquire slaves. You purchase them, or you conquer their lands and take them as slaves. Both of these happened from Western powers in Africa. However, the majority was the former. Do you know why? It's not because the Europeans were civilized. It's not because they were, you know, beneficent merchants simply looking to trade in the wares of the African uh, 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 upper castes who were selling slaves. It's because, that for the most part, the logistics of acquiring slaves are much easier when buying them than conquering lands. Conquering lands means you have to send armies. You have to kill many people and suffer your own killed as well. You have to take those who survive, enslave them, and send them back, knowing full well that up until the moment of their capture, those slaves were free men. That's a very tough thing to get millions of people from. Whereas, if you simply buy slaves, oftentimes these men have been slaves for a while. Uh, there's a pre-existing standard of, and this sounds a little bit glib, but this is true, slave quality where the merchant selling the slave can be held to account for the physical health of the slaves that you're purchasing overall the system is just way easier to manage uh if you're buying them as opposed to conquering territory this is something that a lot of conservatives will often do and the implication is that like the african nations sold out their own people and the europeans were the civilized ones in this exchange this is not true this is just how slavery tends to work. That's the implication PragerU is going for as well here. That, oh, well, we didn't conquer them and destroy their empires, you know? We just purchased at their docks, which, that's how slavery works. That, yeah, that's how it works. Now, are white people exclusively to blame for this? No. 
the black uh, African merchants who enslaved their own people were also very, very bad people. And largely, this was the product of international and intertribal conflicts in Africa. It's not like the slave-owning Africans were just, like, going to their nearest village that they grew up in and just, like, rounding up people. Usually, there were conflicts amidst their own groups, their own tribes, their own nations, their own communities, the outcome of which produced slaves. And if you are fighting with another African tribe, which produces more wealth for your own tribe? killing everyone you come across or enslaving the ones you capture and then selling them. I mean, obviously the latter, right? And there are Europeans there that are happy and ready and willing to buy. So anyway, there's a lot of nuance to this. As people in chat are pointing out, yeah, the majority of slaves were owned by people of a different ethnic or cultural group. It was, it's not like there's one Africa. There's like many different groups in Africa. Always fighting, just as Europeans have. And Europeans did the same thing! You think there weren't war slaves in the wars between European countries? Of course there were! The thing that made the transatlantic slave trade so unique was the fact that Europe, in its uh, uh, global imperial expansion, produced an unprecedentedly large market for slavery. The Europeans produced a tremendous demand an unprecedented demand, and because we were expanding our reach globally, it was a demand that we could have sated by an entire other continent's population of people. So the mechanics and logistics of this were, were very different. Uh, but yeah, I, I, yeah, okay. And in many cases, sold for items as trivial as gin and mirrors. Whites didn't go- I like, I like how the- in many cases, as though this wasn't like a massive profitable enterprise. I, I like how uh, the implication here is that white people were able to delight and impress the backward Africans by showing them like little toy dolls or something. No, Europeans came with a fuck ton of gold, okay? Yeah, also mirrors are expensive luxury items back then. But no, for the most part, it was an overwhelming amount of money that they bought the slaves from. That's, that's, that's what happened. They don't focus on that because they want to make the Africans look as backwards as possible. Go into the interior and round up the natives. They waited on the coast for their black partners to bring them black bodies. The stark reality is that our lives had very little value to our ancestors. Here's the third thing you need to know. Here's the, so the first thing you need to know about slavery is that white people weren't the only ones who did it. The second thing you need to learn about slavery is that the black Africans also didn't want the slaves. We're learning so much today. It's curious how everything we're learning seems to be designed to absolve the guilty feelings of white conservatives who want to make sure that not only does slavery have no effect in the modern world, but also that, I mean, what are we going to get to here? That actually it's black people's fault? The Stefan Molyneux perspective? No. If you think slavery is a relic of the past, you're wrong. There are some 700,000 slaves in Africa today. Right. How many imprisoned people are there in America, just out of curiosity? 2.12 million people were incarcerated in the U.S. in 2020. Damn, we're tripling this number in one country as opposed to the population of a whole continent. That's pretty crazy. Now, of course, not every imprisoned American is what we would call a slave, but they are a part of the economic block that is used for modern slave labor. Uh... And again, Africa is a continent. What is the population of Africa? America is about 320 million, right? Africa is 1.2 billion. I mean, it's not the same thing, like not even close, but I get your point. That's completely true. Slaves in Africa are going to have way worse living conditions. However, given the fact that the goal of this video that we're watching right now is to do everything uh, in its power to uh, reaffirm white and American supremacy, and to ignore all of the circumstances which sort of implicate the American government for the propagation of slavery as it existed, uh, the, th this number is supremely unimpressive to me compared to uh, the goal of like whitewashing history, you know? I would much rather be a prisoner in America than a slave over in Africa, but I am uh, entirely unconvinced by the arguments of a person who wouldn't even acknowledge that what we have here in America is a modern form of slavery. You understand what I'm saying?
The Global Slavery Index 2018 estimates that on any given day in 2016, there were 403,000 people living in conditions of modern slavery in the United States, a prevalence of 1.3 victims of modern slavery for every thousand in the country. Holy shit. So per capita, that's more than the number listed here in Africa. The Global Slavery Index 2018. Oh, hold on. Yep, there's that line right at the beginning. 403,000 people living in conditions of modern slavery in the United States. We're not just talking prisoners either. There's also asylum detainees, immigrants, people in transitive, military, political, uh, immigrant, sexual block. Yeah, sex trafficking as well. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. Yikes. Forced labor, state-imposed forced labor. While the 13th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution provides that slavery and involuntary servitude can be used as punishment for a crime, yikes. No, that's pretty bad. Anyway, the goal of all this is not to say that, like, America and Africa, it's about 9.2 million, by the way, so their standards would be wider than what um, Candace Owens is using here. Yeah, so to be clear, as I was about to say, my, my point here is not that America is worse than Africa when it comes to the standards of living of the people. That would be a fairly idiotic point. The point here is that Candace Owens is desperately trying to whitewash everything happening in the States today, ignoring everything bad that happens within our own borders, and exacerbating, exaggerating, or outright lying about other ethnic, historical, and racial groups to promote this um, American exceptionalist perspective. And again, there is no point in acknowledging anything Candace Owens says here that is correct unless she's willing to tell the full side of the story right now that's the lowest estimate that i could find other sources say there are many more for context that's almost twice as many slaves as were ever brought to the united states child soldiers human wait in the 18 in the 1850 census we had four million slaves in the united states oh we're just saying brought i mean we're not gonna we're just gonna go with brought not the, like, tens of millions that were born here and died 20 years later after giving birth to three children because of the horrific conditions they lived in? Oh my god, dude. As long as we're just going with brought, I suppose. As though they were brought here and then immediately sterilized and never given the ability to produce children who were also born into slavery. Human trafficking, forced labor, these are the conditions that currently exist within the same sub-Saharan region where the transatlantic slave trade originated. You gotta, oh, wait, is it gonna end with the point they actually all believe that actually slavery was a good thing because we saved black people from living in Africa today? I think that's what we're gonna get to. Oh, please do it. Please be mask off. That's always where these arguments lead. Everything that she's doing here is America did good, whites actually ended slaves, whites were saviors, actually black people didn't even want their slaves, and also Africa still is a shithole today. It's like every argument all leads down the same road. African bodies are being sold today like they were sold then. And no, they are not being purchased by any country of white men. In fact, Damn, really? That's crap. European countries aren't buying modern African slaves? Dude, that's wild. Really? Well, they're not being bought by. Their labor is being used, though. You don't have to buy the slaves. All you really have to do is contract the slave owners to, uh, to use the labor of those slaves, which is nice because it means you're not technically participating in the slave trade. You're just benefiting from all the economics of participating in the slave trade. Slavery, hmm. by any traditional definition, is exclusively practiced today. By any traditional definition within non-white countries. What is the argument that is being made here? Also, this is not true. By traditional definition, I assume we're exclusively referring to like chattel slavery that is legalized by the state. What about like other kinds of slavery? What about the sex slaves here in America today that you only talk about in the context of immigrants coming up from our southern border? Is that not slavery? Do they only exist whenever you're complaining about people who come up from our border? But then when you're talking about it otherwise, you're not doing that? What about the white companies that benefit from slave or at the very least uh, heavily exploitative labor abroad? Is that not us economically incentivizing the existence of slavery elsewhere? What about slaves that only exist in areas because we destabilize our countries? Like what happened with Gaddafi, and now there are slave markets in that country. Yeah, what about, what about the American companies that literally just use child slaves? 
without any other adjectives or addendums tacked on. It really, it really makes you wonder, you know? <laughs> really, really jogs the noggin. But we hear almost nothing about that. Just like we hear no- We- You- Again, you can't complain about Americans not being educated on stuff that goes on abroad when you never educate Americans on stuff that goes on abroad. Conservatives will, like, promote American exceptionalism and never teach you about the rest of the world, but then they'll get mad at you for not knowing how bad other, country are, other countries are compared to the U.S. Nothing about how slavery was universal until good people in Europe and America ended it two centuries ago. Oh, God. If I were just a little bit edgier, Candace Owens, a black woman, making a video about how we should all be thanking white people for saving black people from the... If they're... Yeah. Oh, my God. She is paid well for her services. She is uh, a, an excellent sycophant for the uh, conservative demographic. Why? Because our so-called leaders, black and white, wouldn't profit from it. Mm -hmm. Black victimhood is nothing if not profitable. It elects politicians and funds racial grievance groups. And racial grievance groups. If black Americans began to view themselves as partners in the American dream, if we embraced the patriotic spirit that holds all men are created equal. Oh, I love this. The implication here is that you're a civil right. If you're a civil rights advocate, you're anti-American. That's the explicit sentiment that's being given here. What they're essentially saying is that black people, by thinking that America uh, is responsible for the racism their ancestors suffered from, are anti-American. But if they simply put that aside and embrace the patriotic spirit by by thanking the white man for freeing them from slavery, uh, then everything would be good. We still never found out what the race of those Confederate soldiers was, by the way. The patriotic spirit that is our real heritage. Oh, no, your heritage isn't centuries of black slaves that were brought over from Africa and brutalized by white slave owners. Your heritage is actually since the Civil Rights Act was passed and racism was ended forever. That's your heritage. And it's multiracial, and it has nothing to do with systemic oppression. Then the race hustlers would soon be out of business. <laughs> and who wants that? I'm Candace Owens, author of Blackout. Is she wearing a bathrobe, by the way? Why is that this jacket so textured? For Prager University. Nice. I wish I could see the racial demographics on this video, because I guarantee you this is like 98% white viewers. Get ready, get ready for the comments from white people. All right. I respect Candace for her doctrine of truth, peace, and unity. What is this? Oh, they're saying slavery in America was abolished in the uh, 12th century, actually. That's uh, news to me. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, in, in Europe. It's actually not existed for about a thousand years, apparently. This is some much needed broad spectrum truth in these times of racial division and anti-American hate. I really, I do like the grift that conservatives have going on, where they can make a video here, where the, the content of this video is literally, get down on your knees, black people, and worship whitey for freeing you from slavery. That is actually the content of this video. The message being presented through the very selective and often dishonest portrayal of history here is pretty exclusively, well, actually, everyone did slaves, not just white people, and actually white people ended it faster than anyone else, and actually we did better than everyone. Even if you look at Africa today, black people are doing really bad on their own anyway. It, this is really not that different from what people like Richard Spencer say about, like, slavery, you know? The only thing that they do is they're a little more honest and they take the argument another one or two steps. So if this video was being done by an explicit white supremacist like Richard Spencer or, um, or Stefan Molyneux or whoever else, it would then continue and say, instead of saying the bit where uh, black Americans should unite behind their, uh, you know, their uh, the shared patriotic heritage or whatever, they would continue and they would say something like, you know, and, uh, you know, that's because it's in the nature of our people to stay separate. The white man tends to build civilizations, and that's why we ended slavery first, but it seems clear, based on the behavior of those still in Africa and here in America today, that it's best if our people keep separate. All the messaging leads kind of directly to that. They just don't say it. Like, right? Am I, am I not incorrect? What other possible, like, motivation would a person have to say a video on the short history of slavery, and then the entire video is, white people didn't do nothing, actually we did the best, black people are still doing real bad, 
black people today are racist and anti-American for being mad about slavery. I, I mean, pretty weird, right? It's a little bit weird. Smidge weird, I'd say. What's the, uh, they're recommending Thomas, um, Sowell? God fucking damn it. Well, Thomas Sowell is anti-civil rights. I've said this before about the guy, but in addition to him being economically incoherent, which is why real economists don't listen to him, and you don't see him cited in academia, only in conservative YouTube watch circles, he was also, I remember back during the uh, civil rights movement, Thomas Sowell complained about um, black men who were protesting in favor of civil rights, saying they had nothing to protest in favor of. The funny thing is, every time I shit talk Thomas Sowell, people email me and they're like, you can't even fathom how intelligent he is. You're nothing compared, which is, um, which is really, really funny because they never actually try to defend his arguments, but is there a video of that? I think it was somewhere in his wiki page, actually. Uh, I'm trying to see if I can find that now. Here we go. From 1965 to 1969, Sowell was an assistant professor at Cornell University, writing 30 years later about the 1969 takeover by black Cornell students of Willard Strait Hall, civil rights. Sowell characterized the students as hoodlums with serious academic problems who were admitted under lower academic standards and noted it's... It so happens that the pervasive racism black students supposedly encountered at every turn on campus and in town was not apparent to me during the four years that I taught at Cornell and lived in Ithaca. So yeah, those, uh, those civil rights, uh, you know, protesters were, oh, I didn't see any racism, you know, that sort of thing. His whole life's been like that, really. Why do you pronounce it like that? What do you want? Seoul? Is it Ithaca? Ithaca. Ithaca? Ithaca. There. I will never pronounce names correctly. Oh, Jesus. Apparently the reason those students took over that building is because they were responding to a burning of a cross on the lawn of the Wari House, a dormitory for African-American women on campus. The takeover of that building was actually a direct response to an honest-to-God campus cross burning. Uh, Thomas Sowell looking for uh, any racism on campus. You know, his... Where? Ithaca uh, police reportedly suspected, but never proved, the cross was burned by members of the campus Afro-American society as a pretext for further protest. So the police actually said that black people burned it as a racial false flag to... to because, isn't it funny how little uh, the rhetoric changes? Isn't that wild? Oh my god. And after the black students took over the hall, white students from Delta Upsilon fraternity unsuccessfully attempted to retake the building by force. What the fuck was going on in there? Jesus. Then some of the occupying students left the building and returned with firearms? When did this end? The Cornell administration negotiated an end to the building takeover. The photos of the students marching out of the strait carrying rifles and wearing bandoliers made national news and won a Pulitzer Prize for Associated Press photographer Steve Starr. Oh, wow. This is like a whole thing. This, I assume, is the image since it's the one linked with the article. I've seen this image before. I didn't know that was the context of its taking.